Hey guys, Chris Tate here for CG Tuts, and in this quick tip, I'm going to be showing you how to render out an ambient occlusion map using XNormal. And if you're unfamiliar with what an ambient occlusion map actually is, is it's just a way of actually baking the shadow and light information into your model. Uh, very similar looking to what you get if you've ever done a global illumination render or a clay render of your model. Uh, the only difference being it's actually going to be baked into the UVs uh, themselves. And it's a really useful uh, technique to use when you're actually generating your diffuse maps. Uh, if you have any tight detail like this on your model, you're going to get uh, a lot of shadow information baked into the mesh in these little tight areas. And that can actually kind of double as a dirt map when you're uh, creating your diffuse maps. So you get a whole lot of detail and a lot more realism to your models. So before we get started here, uh, one thing to note is you have to have a properly UV model for this to work correctly. So I'll just quickly show you the UVs here that I have on this. Okay, here they are, and I've packed everything onto a single texture sheet, and all these have unique space uh, uh, right now, so nothing's overlapping, and that's something I like to try to do if I can, but um, it's not always necessary depending on what you're working on. So, for example, if you were maybe doing a car model and you wanted to render out an EO map for it, essentially the four wheels are going to be the exact same. So in that case, you could leave the wheels overlapping each other, and they would just receive the same part of the ambient occlusion map, which would be fine. You wouldn't notice any uh, strange details. One thing to pay attention to when you're doing that, though, is in the case of this uh, sweet-looking bike right here, if you're going to bake out an ambient occlusion map for, say, a model of this, even though the front and back tires are essentially exactly the same, the tires are the same, the rims are the same, the spokes are the same, we have some changes in the detail around the tires. So if you look up here on the front, we have the forks that come down and just the fender. But on the back, we have another set of forks here. We also have this wire rack and the chain guard. So because it's going to bake the lighting information into the model, we're going to get some shadows from these pieces projected onto the actual tire, which normally would be okay, but because the two tires are overlapping, you're going to have the same shadows showing up over here. They'll also be showing up at the front tire as well. So that's going to look completely wrong. Obviously, you're going to have shadow marks here that don't uh, match up with any geometry. Okay, so in the case of this, you'd want to actually give everything unique space. If you were doing something completely symmetrical, you could let it overlap. All right, so in my case, I just gave everything unique space, but uh, in this particular uh, model, it probably really wouldn't matter if stuff is overlapping. So just pay attention to that, and you know, depending on your model, that'll dictate whether or not you can uh, overlap stuff or not overlap it. All right, so to do this in XNormal, obviously we need to have XNormal, so I'll just show you where you can get that if you don't already have it. If you head over to xnormal.net, you can just download this for free. Um, in the download section here. All right, here's the newest version here, or you can try the new beta, either way. Um, and essentially what XNormal is, is it's just a map baking program. Works very similar to render to texture in Max, if you've ever used that before. It just bakes maps for your model, and it can do all kinds of different ones. So go grab that and install it, and we'll just get started here. And I'll be using uh, 3D Studio Max for the uh, tutorial, but this will work in any modeling package that you might use. So the first thing we need to do is obviously get our model out of our modeling package and into XNormal. So let's just do that first. I'm just going to export it. I'm just going to save this to my desktop. And let's give it a name. I'm just going to call it AC. And I'm going to save it out as an OBJ. All right, now I'll be using the GW OBJ Exporter, which is a, a free one that I downloaded from uh, guruware.at, I believe. Um, it's very similar to the Wavefront object format that uh, ships with most packages. So uh, either way you want to go here, it doesn't really matter. But I'll be using this. And you can just do a search on Google and you'll, uh, you'll find this. So really the only thing we need to pay attention to here is what our faces are set to. And right now mine are set to quads, which is fine. Um, one thing to keep in note is XNormal needs to have a triangular mesh to work properly. So you have to have it set to either triangles or quads. If you leave it on polygons, it's not going to be able to read your model and it won't work. So just make sure you have quads or triangles set. I have texture coordinates and smoothie groups ticked on as well. I think everything else here is at the defaults. So I'm just going to say export. Okay, it's done, so we'll close that, and I'm just going to minimize this and uh, go to the desktop and open up XNormal. Now, I have gone over this uh, process a few times in some of my previous tutorials, but uh, I just figured I'd do a quick tip on it for people that haven't seen those. So, this is what XNormal looks like, a uh, really simple interface. The first thing we need to do is actually bring our OBJ into it, so let's do that by clicking on High Definition Meshes, and it's going to let us actually bring our model in. So, to do that, we're going to right-click on this bar and just go Add Mesh. Go to the desktop, find our OBJ that we exported, and open it. And for it to work correctly, we're going to have to load that OBJ into the low definition meshes bar as well. So we'll click on this, and we'll just do it the same way. Right click, add mesh, pick the same OBJ, and open it. And the reason there's two of them is if you were baking, say, normal maps, you'd have a high res model and a low res model. So in that case, you'd want to put, obviously, your high res in the high def and your low poly version in the low def and it'll bake the detail down. In our case we only have the one so we're just going to load it into both slots and then we're going to go down to baking options. 
So the first thing we need to do is uh, put in an output path for our map. So I'm going to do that by just clicking on this box. I'm going to save it to the desktop again and just call it AC. And XNormal is going to append uh, ambient inclusion to the end. So I'll just leave the name like that and hit save. Uh, we got to set our size here. So let's do maybe a 2K map. I'm going to leave these ticked on here. Uh, edge padding I think is 16 by the defaults. I'm just going to lower that down to maybe 2. That should work fine for what we're doing. But we'll just leave everything else alone here. I have the anti thing set to 1 times. You can go up to 4 if you want to. It's going to slow it down, but you'll get a better looking result. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it at 1 times. And then over here, we have to tell XNormal what kind of map we want to generate. So these are all the ones it can do. We're just looking for ambient inclusions, so we'll tick that on. And just open up the settings box here for it. And there's really not a lot we have to do in here. Uh, the first thing I am going to do, though, is raise up the number for the rays. And I think 64 is the default. I'm going to take this up higher to maybe 256. And that's quite high. Uh, you can go 128 if you want to, if you have a slower computer. Um, the higher you go, the result is going to be more accurate. But it is going to slow your render down, so just be mindful of that. And for the distribution method, uh, I'm just going to change that to uniform. I find that gives me pretty good results on most models. And the only other thing I'm going to touch here is the background color. So I'm just going to click on this white box and just change the color from uh, white to black and hit OK. And all this stuff in the center here I think is default still, so I'm just going to leave it alone and just close that. And that's really all the setup we have to do. So it's really easy. And now we just got to go down and hit Generate Maps. And that's going to start rendering it out. As you can see here, it's starting to render. And if you don't see yours rendering, just change your uh, pull-down menu here to Notify Tile Updates and you'll see it going. And we don't have a fairly detailed model here, and we're not using super high settings, so this will maybe take 10 minutes to do uh, on my machine. So I think I'll just pause and I'll come back in a second when it's done. Okay, so I'm back and just finished rendering. It took a little over 10 minutes to do, and this is the final result that we're going to have. Um, it's a little hard to see here, so I'm just going to quickly open it up in Photoshop and just take a closer look. So I'll just open it up in here. It's actually a good actual pixels. And we can just kind of take a quick look here and see uh, what kind of results we got. And it didn't come out too bad. A uh, little bit of weirdness up here, maybe. Um, other than that, though, it looks pretty good. And some of your uh, geometry might come out completely black like this right here. It looks like there's a hole right through the UVs, but that's actually where the fan uh, sits on top of the air conditioner. So it's blocking all the light, and it's just turning out black. So that's actually correct. Uh, these little spots, these dots, that's just from the railing posts. And then we have some shadows from underneath the, uh, the frame of it and then from the uh, vent slats and uh, so on. So overall, not a, a bad result and definitely usable. So obviously when you get to this point, you need to know how to actually implement this into your texture map. And I'm not going to go through that in uh, this tutorial because I just don't have time to do it, but I'll just tell you how to do it. Um, when you have your AO rendered out and you're putting together your diffuse map, you just overlay it on top as a new layer and then just set the layers blending mode to multiply and that'll set it up for you properly. All right, so let's just go back here and uh, that's how to look at it in 2D. So what if you wanted to look at it actually on the model? Well, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can actually use XNormal to do it. Um, and we can also do it in Max. So I'll show you how to do it in XNormal first. And one of the cool features about XNormal is it has this 3D viewer built right into it. So we'll just uh, first click on our high definition meshes button again. And I'm just going to untick visible here for the high def one. And we'll just leave it ticked on visible for the low def. All right, we just want to see one model inside the viewer. So we'll untick one and then we'll go into the 3D viewer button here. And you'll see that it has the OBJ still set up here for the low poly mesh, so that's correct. And it'll give you some options to actually add maps in there to view. So we're just going to use the base texture slot and we're going to actually load the ambient inclusion map in there. So we'll click over here, find our ambient inclusion, and we'll just open it. And that's really all I'm going to do here and I'm just going to launch the viewer right here. All right, let's give it a second to load up. And this basically works as like a real-time viewer, almost like a game engine. So you can see right here, um, the ambient inclusion is actually displayed on the model here. Just zoom in a little bit. And you can use the uh, W, A, S, and D keys to actually navigate in here. And you can see the shadows, like I was mentioning before, um, in these tight areas. So when we actually implement this into the diffuse map, it's going to give the appearance that there's lots of dirt and uh, crud and stuff uh, built up in some of the, uh, the recesses. That definitely can add a lot uh, to your model. All right, this is getting a little bit laggy with the uh, video capture, so I'm just going to actually close this. And uh, before we finish up here, I'll just show you how to actually look at it on the model in Max. So let's just close X normal by hitting the X down here. And we'll go back into our uh, Max scene. And we're just going to open this up uh, in the material editor, so you can hit M to open that up. 
Let's turn off our edges with F4 as well. And we'll just grab a new slot here. We're just going to load that ambient inclusion map into the fuse channel here. So we'll open up the map box, click bitmap. Go to the desktop, find our ambient inclusion, and we'll just open it up here. All right, so let's drag and drop it on the model, and we'll just turn on show on viewport. And it's basically going to give us the same result we saw in XNormal. So here it is actually displayed on the mesh. And this is usually how I like to preview my ambient inclusion maps. Um, I just find it the easiest way to actually see you know, how it's working, what's going on. So let's zoom in here. Okay, so you can see we're getting some shadows baked in there. We got some shadows down at the bottom as well, underneath in the corners. And this really uh, does add a lot to your texture maps. Highly recommend using them. Let's check out the top up here. All right, you might have a little bit of weirdness going on. You can see we got, got these uh, spotty details in here. And I think what that probably is, is just some light getting through underneath the blades and it's kind of giving us a spotty shadow. Um, probably could have got a smoother result if we had used higher settings, but uh, even as is right now, I think if you added this actually into your diffuse uh, color map, you probably really wouldn't even notice that. So for the sake of demonstration, it didn't come out too bad. So that's pretty much it really. It's actually you know a very simple thing to set up and uh, implement into your uh, textures and I hope you'll try it out on your own models. Um, it's highly recommended, definitely adds a lot of detail and realism to anything that you're doing. So I guess that'll about do it for the quick tip and uh, hopefully you learned something from this and you'll try it out yourself. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.